Lost on Lost Season 2, baby! Hell yeah! We've watched Seasons 1, 2, and 3 of Lost, and we've learned a lot. Did we? And we've learned to love Jack, Kate, Sawyer, Boone, and Claire. Did we? But now it's time for Seasons 4, 5, and 6. That's right, we're still going to talk about the mysteries and mythologies of the island. And obviously hot tropical hookups. But now we're going to talk about things like the freighter. The others. Charles Widmore. The lighthouse. Time travel. 9-11. Ronald Reagan. The Catholic Church. Titus. Gold Chief. The Military Industrial Complex. The Prison Industrial Complex. The Void. The Orb. And And so so much much more. So strap on and strap down, because if you thought last season was confusing, this is going to be so much worse. Or better, if you like being lost on Lost. Strap on? You heard me. Welcome, everybody, to Lost on Lost. My name is Adam Busher, and I'm joined, as always, by my dear friend and, uh, and patriot, J.P. Russell. Sorry, I can't hear you. I'm watching the debate right now. <laughs> yeah, it's a pre- kind of an auspicious occasion um, because there's two very important things happening. Um, one, we're watching the death of democracy and choice in real time. And uh-huh. two, season three of The Bear dropped today. So, you know, <laughs> strikes and gutters. I, hey, also, we're recording the podcast. Peaks and valleys. <laughs> I actually have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> we are joined, as always, by a guest. Welcome, uh, Lost and Lost Faithful, a newcomer, Matt Kluge, everybody. Say, Hey, hey, Matt. Hey, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, it's been a long time. So, uh, literally, I sent you an Instagram or a Facebook message like three years ago, being like, "Hey, do you want to be on the stupid podcast?" And you're like, "Of course, sure." And then, because of how slow we record and release these, it's been three years. <laughs> I know. I'm glad you actually brought up that the debate is happening right now because in September, when we watch this, it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. When this episode comes out around election yeah. time. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> No, I'm excited. I've been boosting the hell out of this show with a, a bunch of people I know. Oh, They're hell, all don't excited. Do that. Grassroots. No, because I had to explain it to them. Yeah. And they were like, Matt, you're going to be on a Lost podcast? I love Lost. And I said, I've never seen an episode. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and and then you were like, and much like the presidential debate, Lost on Lost will not change your mind about Lost one way or the other. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And also, like, the debate, a bunch of old fucks are about to say some nonsense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Matt, so give us a little bit of an introduction. So, I guess for the folks at home, so Matt and I know each other from both being performers at the Backlot Comedy House, mm-hmm. but you are still in the stand-up scene, correct? Roughly, yes. Uh, I do stand up. Uh, don't tell my parents. They hate it. <laughs> no, I actually do tell my parents. They love it, but I hate it. So there's you a little it. give and take yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so is that is it accurate that you have not watched the ABC television program Lost? No, I've always had this real struggle with Lost where it seems like I should love it. Like it's a mystery show. Yeah. My biggest issue is that it came out when I was 12. <laughs> and, oh god <laughs> yep and it was not a show that was popular with my friends or my parents so i had nobody to talk to about it sure and by the time i got a little bit old enough to be like making my own decisions you know not caring what everybody else thought i looked at it and i was like i hate jj abrams and then sure. i realized that jj abrams actually was not a big part of it no <laughs> not really I, yeah you guys just did the first few got paid and left <laughs> right and then I became a big enough asshole that I was like, wait, the character's name is John Locke. I hate John Locke. <laughs> like, yeah. It's embarrassing at this point. But yeah, I also started to blame Lost as like why I hate television because I hate nerds and Lost was a show for nerds. Same. We are vehemently anti-nerd here on Lost and Lost, especially here in season two, where uh, we seem to have had way more nerds sprout up than uh, initially advertised. So, Matt, when you are watching content, you know, uh, movies, mm-hmm. shows, what kind of stuff do you tend to gravitate toward? I feel like we have to have the discussion on professional wrestling, but I also don't want to be here for three hours. <laughs> But, <laughs> Many yeah. hours later. <laughs> no. So professional wrestling, it is the greatest thing that's ever happened. Like, it is a medium. It's not a uh, whatever. Sure. But, I mean, we're talking about the debate. Let's just talk about kayfabe, the most important term ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like... At this point in time, we're watching stuff like everything they say is a lie. I'm getting crazy. I'm getting very close to Alex Jones here. I'm sorry. (laughs) Actually, you do a really good Alex Jones impression. (laughs) Well, here's the thing. So 
everything they say is a lie. We know it's a lie, <laughs> but people will still believe it. And like, that's what kayfabe is. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's why wrestling is great. Yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, sure. you know, the, the kayfabe, it, like the story of professional wrestling is as much of a lie as the story of any other television show. And we all choose yeah. to believe that what's happening on Lost is real in the world of Lost. So in the world of SmackDown or AEW, yeah, somebody can take several steel chair shots to the head and not get a concussion. I believe it. You believe it. It's still real to me. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Otherwise, like, I just finished Fallout because I know that some people on this podcast love it. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it also hits that same thing with Lost, where people were promoting it to me as, if you love Fallout, you'll love this show. And I do not care about Fallout whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is that, like I said, like, when they say, oh, it's like, just like the video games, and I'm thinking, like, it's going to have, like, the Pip Boy or the Vault Boy. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to yeah. have, like, Big Iron, but slow down, low tempo. I don't want any of that. <laughs> big Iron chopped and screwed. <laughs> like <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but then watching it it was a lot like Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves where yep. yes it is like the thing that you like mm -hmm. but like Lucy is the character who you play the game you enjoy the story you can sure. actually kind of figure out what her progression is mm -hmm. versus the ghoul who plays like I do which is I'm going to murder everybody as fast as I can <laughs> right. murder hobos yeah, yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. if if they if they're still holding caps afterwards so much the better <laughs> right yeah. exactly like it's that it's what I do appreciate because I understand understand that I'm the algorithm for what TV is now. Like, mm. I'm 31. Mm -hmm. I'm a dork, mm -hmm. not a nerd. <laughs> no, call very me a different. Nerd. Important distinction. Yep. Right. And like, yeah, they make it for me, but then it's through an algorithm where it's like, this is what you want, right? And I say, no. <laughs> I don't want serious Batman. Batman was for me when I was a kid, and it's weird that kids don't get to play with Batman toys anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. It's all yeah. just serious dark films. Uh, okay. I am yeah. the knight. You're not the knight. Yeah. Calm down. No. <laughs> You're like mid-afternoon. At best. <laughs> Like, I saw a Batman toy of Robert Pattinson. It really said, like, Batman without a cowl, and it had him in his sad emo makeup. Mm. Yeah, he looks like Gerard Way from fucking My Chemical Romance. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no wonder this is at a pawn shop. No kid wants to play with this. When I was a young boy, I wanted Gotham. <laughs> Yeah. Oh Lord, I love it. So uh, we also we do need to bring up. Uh, okay. I, I need to bring up Matt's relationship to the podcast. Mm -hmm. That's right. W one of the many nights over uh, libations that we had post improv comedy. Uh, don't at me. <laughs> Matt and I got into a conversation about the dumbest ideas for podcasts, and I believe you were the one, Matt, that originally said, like, watching a heavily serialized show out of order, mm -hmm. and then I was like, oh, yeah, something like Lost, and you were like, there, yeah, exactly like that, <laughs> and then right. I took that stupid conversation and took that to Adam, and he said, that's the dumbest thing ever, we have to do it, so. <laughs> I'm glad that you brought this up, because, yeah, when... You guys actually started this podcast. I had no idea who Adam was, <laughs> yeah. but I did go. I remember having this conversation with JP. <laughs> yeah. And the Lost Heads will remember from very episode one where Adam's like, yeah, JP, you promoted this to somebody. And he said, that's stupid. <laughs> that was me. He was the I guy. That. The seed, yeah. now, the seed was born. And now you're going to pay for it. <laughs> the, born there in between two two bros after doing some comedy. Uh, and, and the seed itself was watered with probably, I don't know, nine spotted cows. Um, uh, <laughs> seal smooth. Thank you. Oh, even better. Even better. <laughs> Adam, it's my fault you're here. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh. So so I think it's only fair, Matt, that you know, for every mm -hmm. dollar we make, we give you like a penny. So once we make a dollar, we'll give you at least a penny. <laughs> That's all I ask for. There it is. Really. I like it. Royalties uh, squared away. Excellent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you guys want to talk about Lost? Fuck yeah. I would all love right. to. Let's do it. All right. Uh, today we're talking about The Economist. The Economist is the third episode of the fourth season of Lost and the 75th episode of Lost overall our centric character is Saeed Jarrah. The Economist takes place on the 92nd day after the crash of Oceanic Flight 815. It was written by Edward Kitsis and Adam Horowitz Woo! and was directed by Jack Bender. It also Woo! aired on nice. February 14th, <laughs> 2008. Love that child's play three. 
<laughs> Secret of the Ooze. Um, uh, it aired on February 14th, 2008, and I have no jokes about any of that. Yeah. Um, Adam. Uh-huh. Do you have a recap? Uh-huh. Can you let us hear it with our human ears? Sure. Helicopter? I hardly know. <laughs> On the island. <laughs> On the island, a war is coming. Dr. Jack Shepard and Saeed Jarrah hatch a plan to rescue Dr. Charlotte Lewis from John Locke and his reboot of The Others. Meanwhile, Dr. Daniel Faraday kills time with a science experiment, presumably attempting to locate Frank Lapidus's missing copy of Jimmy Buffett's Son of a Son of a Sailor. <laughs> <laughs> and in the days of future past, Saeed has a list, and he's checking it twice. Yeah. Number one, lay up a sweet chip 20 feet from the pin. And number two, bone down with a choice blonde 20 stories over Potsdamer Platts. <laughs> Kill an economist <laughs> in this economy? It's the economist here on Lost on Lost. <laughs> Bravo! I I knew that there was that joke coming initially just based on the pause that you had, but I had no concept of what it would be. I, it's uh, beautifully executed. I, I, the, the every time I do it, I have to steal myself even harder than the first time. It just it somehow, some way gets funnier every single I time I... I was excited to see it live like i was jazzed for it <laughs> oh it is an experience um and yeah maybe the video will make it to our patreon <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> we got a we got a very low T two J this episode. I made sure to track it here. Twelve seconds T two J. Yeah. He uh, we open on Saeed sitting outside of the helicopter. Uh, he appears to be praying. And then before our first cut, Jack just like very gently hopes into frame. So about twelve yeah. seconds in. There's clearly been. I, I was I was worried that Naomi was somehow still alive again. <laughs> but Saeed goes over and her eyes are open, and I'm like, how is this bitch alive? And then he very uh tastefully closes her eyes I'm like oh she is uh, she officially is. dead now naomi we hardly knew you and i'm fine with that <laughs> i never knew her <laughs> yeah no dude she's um do you ever have one of those like uh blocks in your kitchen that just like knives go into mm -hmm. that, yeah, that's what she is that's basically that <laughs> Uh, Jack is with Miles and Juliet and Kate. They are who is here amongst our folks. It's Frank, Frank and Miles from the freighter, and then Juliet, Kate, Saeed, and Jack. That's who's here. And Naomi, I guess. But Miles is grilling Jack about Ben. He's just like this, it, like the kid following his dad around, like, oh, like at the zoo, like, what's that? Oh, why is this? Yeah. this? And Jack is just like ignoring him or doing his best to. But yeah, Miles is pretty, pretty intent on figuring out what's up with slash where is Ben? Yeah. Saeed also pulls a bracelet off of Naomi. Uh, it says something like, I'll always be with you. Sign Is it RG or RO? Or yeah, RG. RG, correct. Yeah. Uh, are we supposed to know who RG is? I went on the Lostopedia just to be on the safe side, and mm -hmm. they're like, no. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say, as far as like actually watching the show, I don't think it's ever come up. And yeah, okay. according to Lost PD, I, I just they... assume it's Robert Goulet. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, one would think. Um... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will always be with you. Robert Goulet. Robert Goulet. <laughs> Um, Saeed is like, okay, here's the thing. I'll go, I'll go get Charlotte. You want Charlotte? I got you, Charlotte. If you want Charlotte, I'll get you Charlotte. I'll bring her back, and then you can give me a ride. How's that sound? Yeah. Charlotte for a ride on the helicopter. Easy easy peasy. <laughs> and Frank's like, yeah, great. Yeah. Good. Cool. Look, fucking go, go do it. Like, they, like I, I brought a bunch of doctors here. Dr. Daniel Faraday, Dr. Charlotte Lewis, probably Dr. Naomi Dorrit. I'm a helicopter pilot. I got one thing to do, and that's fly the helicopter around. So if you want me right. to fly you somewhere, awesome. Gives me something to do. <laughs> <laughs> finding out about frank is one of those things where if you would have told me this character existed in like 2008 i would have started watching lost <laughs> there's just something about like 
Yeah, he is like a Jimmy Buffett character or just like when Mel Gibson did his whole anti-Semitic rant and then he came back <laughs> as like a Southern general. He's like just the middle phase of that. Yeah. Love me well, some Frank. Every episode he's in, he's so good at like just driving the plot forward. Yeah. Someone's like, what about this? And he's like, yep. Sure. Fucking, yeah. Love it. Do yep. it. We'll leave in 10 Do minutes. Something. Let's just leave now. <laughs> yeah. I can yeah. fly this plane whenever I want. Yeah. Exactly. And so we cut to the flash forwards. Oh, yeah, it is forward now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is forward. Uh, Kluge, how familiar are you with the concept of the flash back in Lost? You you haven't watched the show, so. I, like, I know memes because I know nerds. Okay. So, like, I'm familiar with at least, like, that stuff, like, previously on Lost. Mm. I know about, like, the flashbacks and learning from your show about the flash forwards. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, so this flash forward convention really only existed for the most part during season four because de- de- in okay. season five is when we start doing our time skips and then season six is when we have our flash sideways so this was a convention that really only existed for a very short period of time i'm glad i had a season four then yeah yeah I, ugh. and we haven't had much season four either so <laughs> yeah but yeah saeed's on a golf course i was i just saw the golf course initially and i was immediately reminded of Jin has a temper tantrum on, my, on the golf course <laughs> and i got really excited yeah yeah he's lining up a shot he's uh he and, and a golfer like uh, okay so like i again I've already said this before. I don't know a ton about golf, but like there's certain things that I know. It's like, don't just drive your golf cart up to a guy trying to golf by himself. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Right. We could, I mean, we could reach out to coach and see how, you know, like what's the etiquette on a, on a guy golfing by himself. Like I know like a lot of times if you're playing a public course, you get paired up with strangers. Sometimes if you're by there's I don't know. I think Brandel golfs alone a lot, um, which he probably yeah. likes. Because yeah. In this conversation a little bit later, like, they talk about ha- paying for the privacy. privacy. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, man, why don't you fuck off and let me go? <laughs> yeah, if you wanted to golf with someone, bring a friend. Bring or a friend. Make pay a friend. <laughs> someone to golf with you. Like, I don't know. There's a, a famous Milwaukee lawyer who uh, allegedly is so bad at golf that he pays for the tea time in front of him and in back of him uh, <laughs> so that there's no one around to see how bad he is at golf. I mean, Saeed should at least have a caddy, but I'm worried he would try to shoot. Them. <laughs> it's that guy who keeps losing caddies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why are all these bodies littered around this golf course? Well, we do pay a premium for privacy, so why don't you quit with the 20 questions? <laughs> but yeah, this dude rolls up and he's just like, hey, what up? They have a little back and forth and he's like, don't I know you? He's like, yeah, you probably do. I'm Saeed Jara. I'm one of the Oceanic Six. And the guy is in instantly like ghost face yeah, just like, like oh, oh. Uh, sorry yeah uh, i didn't mean to yeah and then he like get out of here yeah um saeed loses his bet and he's like let me get you your hundred euros and that dude's like don't worry about it. it's all good it's fine and saeed's like no let me get you this hundred euro note it's right here next to my pistol <laughs> don't <laughs> stop moving you're only making it worse <laughs> it's very call an ambulance but not for me yeah <laughs> like, yeah mr Avalino, yeah, I never told you my name. Yeah, pow, 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 pow. <laughs> blip, 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 blip. <laughs> Price is wrong, bitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh man! And then the sprinklers go on in the middle of the day. Oh okay, yeah, we gotta we gotta get coach on this one because uh, yeah, no, I, I'm sure that they turn on the sprinklers all the time in the middle of people just like playing rounds of golf. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Peter Avellino, thanks for uh, thanks for coming out. Don't talk during guys' backswing. Yeah, clap, clap, yeah, if, clap, clap, what, clap. What if? <laughs> What if he really wasn't sent to kill him? He just found the guy that fucking annoying. He's like, you you can't be allowed to survive. Yeah, no more. So that yeah, so that's a that's a pretty stunning thing to happen. And then the lost card comes up, uh, and we stay in flash forward, but it's time later, X amount of time later. Yeah. So he's walking into a fancy restaurant, sees a pretty girl, pretty lady. Yeah. And he's like, hey, uh, is this free in German? And she's like, see. Sí. And he's like, thank you. And then she's like, what up? And he's like, I don't actually speak any German. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> But they, yeah, they they just have like a little chat. Like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm looking for this thing. Oh, it's right here. Oh, you want some espresso? Um, it's it's kind of a cute little scene. I don't know. Yeah, I I didn't write down any of the specifics. Specifics. All I wrote down was Saeed is the new Riz Master Desmond. Who question mark? 
<laughs> well, it helps that like he's off the island and has conditioner. Yeah, his hair has been straightened, and yeah, it's all like and a collared yeah, shirt, very man. suave. I was pin, like, man, suit. David Andrews is one handsome dude, and she's totally like he's not doing anything like too red flaggy. It seems yeah. very like innocent. Obviously, it's like she has to buy into the fact that he's just asking her for directions, and then there's this little meet cute, and it's like, hey, you have dinner? Okay, yeah, yep, yeah. let's do it. That's all it is. Just like they're they're vibing. Uh, like he he throws out the vibe, she vibes back. It's all vibes. It's all good. Yeah. And then so she's like, she circles a map or a spot on the map, and he's like, this is where you're taking me to dinner. So I'm gonna see you there at eight. And then she like leaves, and then he walks out, and he and then he whips out the burner, and he's like, oh, I've made contact, and then he throws the phone away, and it's all very like clandestine. Yeah. It's like okay, it's like ooh, the flash forward part of this episode is gonna be like an erotic spy thriller. Ooh, here we go. Let's. <laughs> It's just, it's so cute because it's not cute, but like, you know, it's this really cute scene and all this stuff. And then I'm thinking like, man, Saeed's got a second lease on life and he's like, I'm going to get back to murdering people. (laughs) There's a bunch of fake snow because this has got to be Honolulu. Um, Yeah, that must have cost a fucking fortune. To put that much fake snow down. Yeah. So yeah. Stern, the guy who made like the fucking snow machine for Hollywood from Milwaukee. Uh, Oh, I, uh. I put a note here that I had mentioned in a previous episode. I think I think it may have been the last recruit that we we talked about Flash sideways Saeed and how he he probably didn't have a lot of bodies on him. We hadn't seen him kill anybody in this episode where they were talking uh-huh. about him being at the seat of a murder. Oops. And, and then it turns out that real Saeed, Prime Saeed, so I hit man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't have a lot of transferable job skills. Yeah. Come back to the island. Saeed is looking at a picture of Desmond that Naomi had. So uh, talks to the crew and is just like, hey. That's fucking weird. Yeah. Maybe Desmond might have some information, so why don't we go talk to Desmond? Desmond is among a group of survivors that must still be at Survivor Beach. We don't yeah. see them and we don't go there in this episode. So we got to, I guess, make that assumption. And I guess Juliet goes to get him? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Jack is like, do you mind? And she's like, I got nothing better to do. It's not like I got, f- it's the fucking island. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is season four. They're going to start phasing me out real quick. Yeah. <laughs> the clock is a ticking. So, yeah. So, she, I guess she, like, Jack volunteers her to go. She acquiesces. He's, um, it's going to take a few hours there and back. Because the story needs it to. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Saeed then just says, okay, so that's AT Mission 1. AT Mission 2 is the Charlotte thing that I brought up earlier. I'm going to handle this because, Jack, the last time you talked to Locke, you put a gun to his head and pulled the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> And I think we were all happy that that gun wasn't loaded. <laughs> yeah. And Jack's like, yeah, I, I yeah, 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 I did yeah, do that, didn't yeah. I? He's like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I mean, he came to the island not being able to walk. Maybe the island would have saved him even if he did get hit in the house. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I thought about that. Oh shit! Are all the bodies that are buried at Survivor Beach just healing? <laughs> like, <laughs> they're get, yeah, they're gonna be back anytime. Just like <laughs> season six problems. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love uh, My- Miles is very you know we don't know I I assume we wouldn't know much about Miles canonically at this point. No, um, no, not yet. Um, you know, because I think there's only guy, uh, we haven't seen episode two of season two. Four. Yeah, we yeah, saw yeah. the pilot. There's one gap we haven't watched yet, which I believe is right. confirmed dead, which we're not going to watch for a long time. There's this. Now we've seen Eggtown after this. So, yeah. Yeah. But he he does, you know, he's got some quippy line to say to be like, oh, what? You're going to go go leave without me? And say so he's like, of course not. Just like instantly shuts yeah. the whole thing yeah. down. And I was like, oh, uh, oh, right, we should uh, get uh, going. Cool. then. I guess <laughs> I I do appreciate that Miles was there just so that I had like a reference point for Sawyer. Just yeah. because oh, sure. from your guys' show, I'm like, I know that Sawyer is a D-bag, but like yeah. he wasn't doing anything yet. Yeah. And then they're just like, no, nah, man, Asian Sawyer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Her, yeah. Later, Hurley was like, great. The Fre- Freighter Brothers yeah. and then there's Sawyer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then Saeed hits him with the classic, we'll leave in 10 minutes. Leave now. Yeah. Leave now. Just go. <laughs> just go. You all have a backpack. Like, your shit's all packed. Go. Right. What are you waiting on? Why are you always preparing? Just go. Just go. <laughs> Frank's rolling us some dubs for the road. <laughs> <laughs> We're not taking any breaks. Go take a piss right now. We're leaving yep. in time. Yeah. How dare you piss in the jungle? <laughs> Cut over to Locke's group. They're walking. Walking. Just uh, along the way, Sawyer's uh, grilling Ben about his uh, alleged freighter spy. The freighter's out there. Yeah. Ben says he's got a spy on it. Everybody wants ben to know. Ben looks even more beat up than the last time we saw him in season four. Yeah, he's, I think he's I think he's taken a, a, another minor beating since, since episode one of the season. <laughs> 
<laughs> can't wait for episode two. <laughs> <laughs> But Ben, as usual, he has a point. He's like, I can't. Well, he does, he doesn't make the point. Locke makes the point. If he if he tells us, well, I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> the, right. o- the only thing that's keeping him alive is his secrets. Yeah. They arrive at where Jacob's cabin is supposed to be. It's supposed to the Jacob's cabin is inside of this ash ring, but yeah. it's gone. Why? Because it's some sort of ethereal metaphysical cabin thing that's not oh, it's only there when you need it to be there. It's the same reason why they can't find the light. Blah 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 blah. Mm. Same reason why they can't find the island. Yeah. Same reason they can't find the G spot. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's what What's Her Face was circling on the map for sight. Mm-hmm. She's like, it's right here. Trust me. <laughs> There's a man in a boat. Lord, <laughs> it's right on the river. Desmond. De- if you're Desmond, yeah. <laughs> um, this weirds lock out, and and Ben needles him a little bit. He's like, eh, what are we doing here? And Locke needs directions, and Locke's like, no, I don't. I was just yeah, stopping by to, to see if it was here, and it's not, and that's fine. So let's just keep moving. That's fine. Well, yeah, moving on. <laughs> Next, yeah. this was the exciting part for me in the episode. At this point, was just because I was like, no, th- there's not this kind of bullshit, is there? <laughs> like, I can deal with like time, but now there's also like fucking location displacement. I was actually upset. Yeah. 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 That's okay. It, you're yeah. going through the natural, the, the five stages of grief. Yeah. <laughs> the five stages of lost on lost. Yeah. I was denying that it was happening. Yep. I was bargaining that yep. why did I do this podcast? Yep. <laughs> I'm doing it for exactly one penny. <laughs> I'm going to get that penny. Yeah. <laughs> The uh, before they take off, they have a discussion about what to do with Charlotte. Locke is planning to hold her as a hostage. She, Hugo doesn't vibe with that. Um, yeah, he's like, "What the fuck, man!" Like, it's like I thought we were just like going to hide. We're not taking hostages and doing all kinds of stuff, other stuff. And Locke asserts his authority here. He's like, "We're taking a hostage, and are you're gonna have to be cool with that, Hugo?" Yeah, I'm making the fucking rules here, dude. Yeah. Cut over to the helicopter. Um, do we have a really, really pointless scene with Jack and Kate? <laughs> well, it's it's pointless, but I feel like it's also one of those where like the writers were like, "Hey, we read the forums. Apparently, Kate gets left behind every time. Uh, so now we have to like draw attention to it." <laughs> Well, like, it, it's also, I think, an attempt at a character moment, a character spot for the two of these, for Jack and Kate, because he says, or she she hits him with the, oh, you don't get to go long? Now you know what it's like to be me. And he's like, oh, yeah. so I'm just going to wait 20 minutes and go anyway? Oh, touche. The important thing here is that Jack says, you should go with them. I'm not worried for your safety because Sawyer is there and Sawyer won't let anything happen to you. So it's this, yeah. it's this residual love triangle shit between the three of them. Jack's subtly hinting at their stuff. And he's got a little bit of hurt in his voice, but he's like, I, I'm, I'm still a little hurt, but I'm getting cool with it. Right. Well, and also he's calming down in general. You know, he's, yeah. he realizes that the situation is now not just relying on him. There, are, There is a boat. There's yeah. helicopters. There's people on the island. There's yeah. a way out. Like, this is what he fought for in seasons one through three. And now... Yeah. It's, now that it seems rescue is imminent, he's yeah. starting to take some of the edge off. Yeah. Yeah. I left no notes for this whatsoever. Like, <laughs> Good. I just no, watched... you're fine. <laughs> I watched it stone-faced going, uh, so that's Kate, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She looks nice in low jeans. No notes. I would leave her behind, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They take off. Frank asks Jack about Saeed. Where is he from? Iraq. What's his scoop? <laughs> he's a dude. He's a diplomat? No. He's a torturer. Mm. I mean... He's also a communications officer. Yeah, he's, like, he's an intelligence officer also. You know, he's also... Oh, yeah. a, uh, he was a chef, I think, too. Like, he's got... Like, he wears yeah. a lot of hats. Like... Yeah. Let's not judge Said by the worst of his actions, you know, lest, lest all of us be judged for our worst actions. I did like how Frank was like, where is he from? Iraq. And then Frank said, oh, OK. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I, was, I was waiting for Jack to be like Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Where's he from? Iraq. God damn 9-11. <laughs> There's a quick commercial here. And then we. Um... Yeah. Walking through the jungle. Miles asks about Locke. What's the deal? How come you guys yeah, aren't yeah, like? Yeah, I thought uh, you guys were all surviving together. Now you're factioning. Like, well, what's up with this? Is this like manufactured drama for uh, a slowly diminishing audience interest level? Like, what's happening here? Oh. <laughs> uh, Said 
tips doesn't he doesn't tip here. Saeed almost always, whenever he does something like this, is he does it on purpose. And so here he makes it clear to Miles that he doesn't necessarily trust the freighter people either. Right. Despite the fact that he is with Jack and Jack made a show of believing that the freighter people were there in their best interest. Yeah, because what what's the line? He's like, you know, like uh, I forget what Miles sets him up with, but he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet. Like, you yeah, know, I, I might still fucking choke you to death with your own hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cut to flash forward. Yeah. Saeed meets Elsa at her hotel room. They're going to go to the opera. Looking dapper as hell. If, if you can't wear your tuxedo by the fifth date, what are we even doing here? I'm going to say <laughs> that the next time I ever go on a fifth date, which will be uh, never. <laughs> also, wasn't it just a suit? Not a tuxedo. Yeah, I think it was just a suit, but I don't know. It, it, it was hard to tell. I wasn't paying attention too closely to what they were wearing, I guess. I well, know. Saeed is so beautiful that it did turn into a tuxedo. Like, just <laughs> it started out as a black like, suit and then like, yeah, yeah. just anamorphed. <laughs> sort of as an A-shirt and boxers. And by the time he walked out, it was just a tuxedo. <laughs> Tails and a top hat. I do like how Elsa was like, man, there's a lot of red flags. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're so elusive about your job and what you do and why you disappear. And like, I feel like I've felt a gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gun is digging into my hip <laughs> she volunteers to leave her pager behind she's got this pager because she's supposed to be at her boss's beck and call the nice thing about it is that he really only beck and calls her a couple times a year so she's like I'm gonna leave the pager here I don't want him to interrupt if tonight's the night that he comes to town I don't care I'm with my man my my beau Saeed and he's like I'll carry the pager it's fine <laughs> yeah it's really important I know who your boss is. <laughs> yeah. Like, clearly we understand what's going on here. And he fumbles, but... man. He fumbles. Just a little. Oh, but he... but she's like, why are you still in town? He's like, the job isn't over yet. And she's like, I thought it was because of me. And then in, in Dude, my notes here, I was like, Desmond would have said the right thing here. <laughs> that's, you know, I, I was kind of like... I think that's my least favorite exchange in this episode. I feel like Saeed would have caught that one. You know what I mean? I, I I also found that line pretty unbelievable. I was like, I feel like he's too savvy to say a thing. To like, he's art. He's doing as best he can to already hide his suspicious behavior, and he can only do so much with that. Like his right. behavior will be suspicious despite his best efforts. He's canny enough to not say something suspicious, and then he said right. something suspicious. But he's the fifth date into this. He should know the routine by now, right? right. Like, mm -hmm. why are you still in town? I found a reason Free. to stay. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Done. I was expecting him to say it, and then he didn't. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Eh. Eh. Cut back to the island. Jack and Frank and Dan are just like hanging out. And, and Dan's like, I got some time. Let's do some nerd shit. Where's my nerd bag? Let's set up a beacon for a fucking rocket to just come hit this this fucking frisbee on like a fucking mop handle that I've got going yeah. on here. And okay, like uh, the, the science is like, okay. It should be two and three, two, one, and then it shows up fucking later. Like there's there's some sort of time difference. Yeah. Like Fre we, the we freighter's X amount of kilometers away. It should take this long to get here. Right. But the rocket just fucking comes in smoking hot at like a thousand miles an hour. And he didn't even tell anybody like, hey, a rocket's going to oh, land here. Well, okay. I mean, yeah, he should have been like, hey, they're firing in a rocket. And it, yeah, it's like I maybe he didn't say anything because Jack and Frank were like over in the woods talking about baseball or whatever. But the thing that bothered me was like he set up the landing spot for the rocket like eight feet from the helicopter. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. Like My calculations have to be correct. So I know when it's going to land. There's nothing going to be wacky going on. It's okay to have it by the helicopter. Nothing's going to yeah. go wrong. No U.S. built missile has ever missed its target. <laughs> I'm a physicist. <laughs> Look at my tie. <laughs> also, like, I know... It's TV and it's sci-fi, but like if there's a time difference, why can they communicate via radio? Anyways, uh... <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. I mean, Adam, what time is it for you right now? Dude, about eight o'clock in the evening. So, you know. Yeah, but right, like. See, there you go. We're communicating live, but you guys are two hours ahead. It's the same yeah. concept, right? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. <laughs> well. Maybe. I don't know. Get Adam it, Horowitz on the line. If we, yeah, if we yeah. got any, uh, if we got any RTOs in the in the chat, you know, drop drop in the comments, sound off in the comments. If uh, radio would be displaced by some sort of time differential or whatever, <laughs> our um, frequency is four twenty dot sixty nine. 
Saeed and Miles and Kate arrive. Oh, the rocket doesn't show up. Yeah. Zoe Bell counts it down. 40 kilometers, 30. What the fuck is a kilometer? (laughs) 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 USA, USA. (laughs) She counts it down. The rocket doesn't show up. And Dan's like, weird. It just fucking blows up the other's village. <laughs> the yeah. barracks are just gone. That would have been that would have been a great bit if the, we cut to Sa- Saeed and Miles and Kate, and the rocket just like lands in front of them. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, I don't what know. Is that? Go around it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we cut to the three of them. They arrive at the barracks. The barracks is, of course, where the others live when they're not pretending to be cave people. It's this little cute subdivision. They give up their cover from the woods to go through the open area of the barracks just to go to a house that's against the wood line <laughs> and then sneak into it. I'm like, you could have just followed the wood line and yeah. not given up all that cover. But hey, hey. it's fine. They think they may have beaten Locke's group there because it's pretty quiet uh, until they hear a bang. I mean, I was excited to like see other village. Well, mm-hmm. a because Miles was like, they have a playground. <laughs> but then I was, I never actually knew that it was like houses, houses. Yeah. Like you guys say, like barracks and everything. And I'm like, I get it. Yeah, They're sure, people. sure. I yeah, get it. Sense. Yeah. And then I see like Wawatosa, and I was like, what the <laughs> heck is happening? <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, the 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 t- the name barracks is a bit of a misnomer because it doesn't look like a barracks. Mm-hmm. It's not like just nah, like man. bunk houses and I've shit. I've been like in that. some fucking barracks. They don't look like that. Yeah, exactly. No, they like uh, a, a more apt title would have been the village or yeah, Wawatosa. Wawatosa. <laughs> South Wawatosa. There we yeah. go. That's just called West Dallas. <laughs> This is this this is now a comedy podcast just about Milwaukee suburbs. <laughs> oh man. You guys ever been to Sullivan's? <laughs> that place makes a good burger. All right, that that might be the that end of the, the next Milwaukee jokes. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm so I'm so used to like the LA comedy podcast jokes, like talking about the 409 or whatever. But then throw me into Milwaukee, way more close. And I'm just like, I have no idea what's yeah. going on. Like, I mean, the track oh, traffic on the 894 actually gets pretty bad too. Like I've driven in there, and it's like it's not as bad as the 405. But like I don't like being on the 94 bypass that much more than I like being on the 101 after 6:30. You know what I'm saying? I'm disconnecting this call. You get past sunset, you got to go to Western or Normandy, going southbound. Give me a fucking break. Uh, and whenever I go on Sunset Boulevard, I'm ready for my close-up. Exactly. <laughs> Jesus. That didn't save it. <laughs> uh, valiant effort. Hur- Hurley's in the closet. They, that's where yeah. the bangs come from. They hear a, It's inside Juliet's house. They find him tied up in uh, a closet. Uh, they cut to, we cut to commercial. We cut back. Commercial, yeah. Ooh. Got, gotta hate. Gotta hate when they put X characters gone off the reservation in a script. Um, folks, that's one of those things that... Let's not say it anymore. <laughs> that, that, that's right in there yeah. with um, Low Man on the Totem Pole. Shit yeah. like that. Let's just not Pow do wow. gone We're off the... Yeah, that anymore. Let, let's not. Let's not. So, but that that's not... That's not Jorge Garcia's fault. That's Adam Horowitz and Edward Kitsis' fault. <laughs> yeah. Hugo tries to explain. Locke's going Colonel Kurtz, whatever, like... The, I they tied me up here that whatever he said you know he said that the freighter people are here to, to kill us and I, you know and <laughs> he says that like and Miles is like that and says like so like are you and Miles turns to him and goes not yet and gives yeah. him this little like that. and that's like <laughs> I uh, love Miles so it. much bits love it Miles wants to know where Ben's house is because uh, Hugo mentioned Ben's house oh they went to Ben's house but they said they were gonna go to Ben's house before they leave so Miles is like where's Ben's house Miles is still looking for Ben yeah I know it becomes clear late in the episode but I wrote down here I was like is Harley lying <laughs> Hurley's like a, yeah. Hurley's like a notoriously bad liar. And I got to the end of this and I was like, he's lying. Yeah, but as yeah. as the show goes on, like he's terrible at it at season one, but as it goes along, he builds his confidence. You know what I mean? Because there there was some I other suppose. episode that where we saw where he was lying. Oh, when he uh, pretended that he could see Jacob and somebody didn't believe him. Oh, sure. Richard Richard didn't believe him, and it's like, nah, he's he's. He's learning to just kind of roll with it. I put all my faith in Hurley on this. I believed him 100%. Okay. But once again, I was like, why would Lost of all shows lie to me about something? Right. 
Jorge yeah. Garcia would never. And I, mm-hmm. I, I think I agree with you now that you said that, JP. Like, I, I do, yeah, it does seem like his lying is better because I got to the end of it and I, the thing is, I wasn't sure he was lying. I was sure. asking myself, was he? And it, yeah, if it was a season one Hurley lie, I'd be like, oh, he's lying. But yeah, I got to yeah, the yeah. end of this, I was like, yeah, this might be, yeah. This maybe, might maybe. be some fucking maybe. bullshit. Yeah, maybe. I could see Locke getting annoyed with Hurley and just being like, no, throw him in the closet. He's uh, out of here. He's especially done. the way that that last scene that they had together ended up with Hurley pushing back against taking Charlotte to the hostage. Yeah, like, it, it, play, it tracks to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we come back to the helicopter. The rocket shows Fucking up. Lands inches from the helicopter. <laughs> Danny compares the timer inside of it to the timer he has. It's a 31 minute difference. So it took the rocket 30. Not only did it take the rocket way longer to get here than they thought it was, it somehow was in the air for an additional 31 minute. Like more time had passed for the rocket right. than they had in the island. So he quick radios in and he's like, how's my souffle doing? Yeah. You got to keep an eye on those. You got to keep an eye on those. Uh, and then right around this time, Juliet returns with Jaboy Desmond. <laughs> we got to Ben's house. Um, <laughs> oh, man. I'm so excited. We got to see the closet within a closet again. <laughs> yeah. They, they're nosing around. They're looking. They're clearing corners, doing all that stuff. And yeah, Saeed sees the scratches on the floor. The telltale sign of a secret door. Pulls it open. And yeah, Ben's secret C4 stash and his stacks of cash and passports This motherfucker's got a bunch of ties in here. (laughs) Look at these cheap suits. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous! Like it's the closet of a of a spy. Yeah, and yeah, like Saeed's like rifling through it and all this. Uh, somewhere else in the house, Sawyer gets the drop on Kate. Yeah, and then Locke gets the drop on Saeed, and then we find here that Hurley was in on it. He lured them in as bait, and then Locke's group got the jump on. And Sawyer tries to like shush Kate, almost like he's gonna like. I, I thought maybe he was gonna like clue her in or something like that. Like he yeah. enters the room and yeah. she draws a gun on him. He's like, shh, 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 you know, quiet. And then she's like, Saeed! Yeah. 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 Being a real Kate about it. The trust. The trust isn't there. You're just going to go back to prison. Don't shoot me. (sighs) We'll we'll talk about that in a second. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Rousseau takes Saeed and puts him into the rec room with Ben. Ben makes a joke about them (laughs) running out of jail space, whatever. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, they have like a little brief conversation, but we go back to Sawyer and Kate. And this is the thing where like Sawyer is trying to convince her to stay, basically. Yeah. What do you have waiting for you? You're you're like, you're a felon. Like you were already on the run. Do you think you're just going to not go to jail? He's like, I'm staying because because I've already made that distinction. I've got nothing waiting for me. Jail's not waiting for me, but also nothing good is waiting for me. If I leave this island, everyone is going to make fun of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> is interesting because Kate hits him with some line about like you know what were we gonna do here like just sit around and play make believe or something like that yeah how long can we play house yeah oh yeah how long can we play house Sawyer has a, a really earnest response yeah. of like I don't know let's find let's out let's find out yeah Um, and I don't know if it it was lost in the edit or whatever but she has almost no reaction to that yeah and then Sawyer has they cut back to him and he's got like a look of defeat and I feel like some sort of better acting choice or a different take Take would have been way more impactful sure because other than basically breaking eye contact she has almost no emotion toward that because like that's a really earnest thing to say and i feel like especially for sawyer that's a lot for him to emotionally put himself out there like that yeah and the edit did not reflect that at all yeah come back to the rec room Locke brings some iced tea for saeed and they discuss how to proceed give me the map scott <laughs> i need i need that nerd lady uh, right quick. Yeah. Is basically what it comes down to. Yeah. During this conversation, Locke mentions Ben's spy. He's like, I don't need your thing because we got a spy. And Said says, the day I start trusting him is the day yeah. I've sold my soul. And I wrote down, that's a pretty weird and specific thing to say. <laughs> yeah. I didn't well, clock I- it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Again, as the resident, I've I saw I've seen the show all the way through. Like I remember who Saeed's boss is, <laughs> like before oh. we get to it. So I was like, eh, okay, yeah. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. But like Saeed's basically like, listen, I I understand we are split up into two different groups right now. I don't trust these motherfuckers either. Like, right. but just hiding on the islands not the play here. Right. My play is I want to get on this freighter and figure out what the fuck is going on. And to do that, I need her as a bargaining chip to catch a ride. Yeah, let's game this thing out a little bit and see like hiding gets us no information so let's get some information this is where the sequent unsequential show that you guys do really threw me for a loop because i remember adam being like you know i don't even remember charlotte really (laughs) so a lot of the tension here just i was like 
Yeah, just letting it wash over me. Mm. Yeah. Because, yeah, I was watching him, like, talk with Ben, and I was like, yes, Aid, I would never trust this guy either. Yeah. <laughs> Locke is like, why would I give you her for nothing? And he's like, oh, I didn't oh, say I wouldn't. I didn't say shit I didn't about say that. I wasn't going to give you a little something. Listen, this annoying redhead or, uh, listen, I'm going to upsell you right now. This guy, he's a laugh riot. <laughs> he can talk to dead people. Jokes. Jokes all day. <laughs> he's easy on the eyes. Let me introduce Introduce you to your new hostage, Miles Strong. Uh, tell her, <laughs> <laughs> Miles Strong. <laughs> Miles per hour. Yes. Oh, yes. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there we go. We got the name of the episode. Thanks, Gluey. <laughs> That's uh, what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> but we come back to the flash forwards. They're having a little, uh, little come down, a little aftercare, whatever you want to call yeah. it. They're cuddling. <laughs> it um, had to be either real vanilla. Or wildly violent. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way that Saeed is nestled like into her. Like his, he's got his head very low down on her body, yeah. like very, like almost near her belly button. Like very, it's, yeah. very, it's like it's <laughs> like a lowercase like K. Yeah, yeah. I love these two together. <laughs> and now, now that they've like put their stuff on each other's stuff, now she's got all these questions. <laughs> yeah. So, what's your deal? So, what's with the job? You're never telling me about the job, and now I want to know about the job. And he's like, you know what? He's like, I'm into cryptocurrency. And she's like, ooh, that's a deal breaker. Unless, how much cryptocurrency? (laughs) Yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah. Um, He's like, you look a lot like my ex-girlfriend, so I'm going to tell you some stuff. (laughs) (laughs) And then her pager goes off. Aw. He was going to tell her all the stuff, and then the pager went off. And then says, mm. she's the one that's got to run away. Where's my dress? It's like replacing old yeller with old yeller. Like, <laughs> I, I have to shoot this one, too, now. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Speaking of dead girlfriends. Lordy. He doesn't get a chance to tell her what's up, but he's like, hey, uh, how about instead of going to him, just bail. Just bail yeah, and and just don't be get out of here. don't be like Amps a gray. don't be a person of interest in what's about to happen. <laughs> and, and she, you know, instantly puts it together like, oh, I get it. Like, oh, you're not here for me. You're here for my boss. So she shoots him. <laughs> so she hits him with the fucking Uno. Rever- I did not see this shit coming, dude. Ooh, just boy. I was I was very much caught off guard. She's she hits him with the Uno reverse and is like, uh, "Psych, you you thought you were here for the target. I'm here for the target. Target's you. Yeah. I'm trying to get to your boss. You jive ass turkey." <laughs> and then she gets on her clandestine phone with her boss and is like, "Yeah, I'm a fuck this dude up." Yeah, she's like, uh, "Well, I he I'm just gonna kill him because what like you know whatever." And she's speaking in I think German, right? Something like that. But yeah, like while she's in the other room, Said whips something at the mirror, which distracts her, and then he can get to his pistol. And he uh, he lays her out. Yeah, and she. I mean, she caught him off guard. Yeah, like the look on his face of just like, "Are you fucking kidding me right now?" Like, and then uh, yeah, he gets gets his gun and drops her. And there's no like, there's no sweet goodbyes. Like she's got like a second of life left, but he put two in her. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he put three in her. Lord, um, yeah. oh boy, oh boy, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. As far as this is goes, a pretty pretty massive blind spot on Saeed's part to not pick up yeah. that she may or may not be in the know as far as what's going on with her boss, you know? So. And again, like it's like a Mr. and Mrs. Smith thing. Like yeah. had they not been sent to kill each other, God, they would have been perfect for one another. <laughs> It's not ever really explicit in the episode, but I think that he she does remind him of Shannon, especially oh, especially as she's dying. Even and even though he wasn't responsible for Shannon's death, he was there when she died. Like this is the second like, why do all my girlfriends keep getting shot? Is yeah. it me? Am I the issue? <laughs> this is like the second eight that he slept with, and then she died shortly after. <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, it would be weird if she wasn't Shannon coded, just for the simple fact that yes, Saeed will kill a woman. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> oh. we come back to the helicopter Desmond asks Frank about Penelope he's like hey why do you have a picture of my girlfriend he's like I don't have a picture of your girlfriend Na- Naomi had a picture of your girlfriend he's like this is my girlfriend everybody this is my girlfriend Look how hot she is. Oh, that is. picture? <laughs> that got passed around the freighter a lot. It was a long journey to get out here. It's like, we get it, Desmond. That's your girlfriend. You tell us yeah, all yeah. all the time. 
Yeah. <laughs> nice. You pull. Good work. <laughs> nice. What's her boat's name? Uh, <laughs> uh, Saeed comes over the hill with Charlotte. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he traded Kate because Kate wasn't there at first. I was like, yes, Saeed. I mean, he he might have. Here's a two for one, right? Yeah. Like They're negotiating. Uh, Charlotte for Miles. Not enough. Charlotte for uh, Kate. Less. Charlotte for Miles and Kate. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, what if what, what if Saeed was like, I'll give you Kate too. And Locke was like, ew, no. <laughs> ew. I'll give you Miles and Kate. Ew, you can keep the Kate. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, no, thank you. Yeah. Can no, Can you take Charlotte and Kate? Yes. Then, then all of a sudden, Kate's like, why am I? I was. <laughs> I'll give you Charlotte just to take Kate out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, they lost a lot of fuel on the way in, so they've only got space for three bodies besides Frank. Yeah. Des is like, I'm going, because again, look at my girlfriend. <laughs> and how happy we are in this picture. I need to get back to her. A S A F P. The um, F is for but, fucking. Um. <laughs> but then uh then Saeed's like, we should take Naomi's corpse. And I'm like, oh well, she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> because like Frank's like, Danny? And he's like, oh no. Uh, my girlfriend's here. Yeah. And then Charlotte's like, what? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, I mean, Charlotte's here and I should stay with her. And she's like, yeah, that's better. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So it's, and Saeed had already made a deal. So he was going to be one of the one of the three. So yeah, nobody else wants to come along. So like, well, we got space for the, for the knife block. So let's toss her in. I mean, it was beautiful, but it's like, at this point, she is just cargo like right. you don't right yeah well, you can you put her, her in the now doubt. or yeah I, you know if you get her later she's decomposed a little bit more and she'll weigh less, weigh a little so bit like less, yeah. less fuel if that's what we're concerned about yeah, yeah. you could cremate her too and mm-hmm. just be done with it we just bury her in the mass grave yeah. like there's yeah, there's plenty of places to bury her on the island you can bury the the dharma mass grave you could bury her uh at the graveyard on survivor beach you could bury her in the playground next to alex you could bury her in oh <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Frank. Frank's like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. Just everyone get in the whirly bird and let's yeah, go. Let's go. You've been gone for a hundred days. Somebody right. has to get on this with me. Right. Like we didn't come here to rescue anybody, but since we're here and that's all we've been talking about, let's go. It's like I have snacks and Jimmy Buffett. Let's mm-hmm. go. Oh, and uh, what's his face is like, you have to take the exact path back. You gotta, you gotta. <laughs> yeah, Some then, fucking nerd shit. Yeah, and then Frank gives him the swirly, and yeah, you'll be off by thirty. One minutes, which will still make you on time more than most airlines. Oh, got him! Oh, Boom, roasted. Take him. that, Delta. Got Take him. that, American. Yeah. Take that, United. So good. <laughs> <laughs> we go back to the flash forward. Saeed arrives at a vet to get patched up because that's where you go when you can't go to a hospital. You go to the vet. You always go to Jeremy Piven's vet <laughs> in heat. In heat. <laughs> Give me that tie. My daughter gave me this tie. Give me the fucking tie. Give me the fucking tie. <laughs> <laughs> He goes in, and there's a man with a kind of familiar voice. Like, yeah. again, like I could tell who it was immediately. I don't know if you right. guys, if you yeah. guys picked up on it right away, but it's like it it's Michael Emerson speaking like deeply and slowly, trying to change mm. his normal Ben cadence to something not quite Ben until we see his face. <laughs> Yeah, but then he's like, "Are you crying because it hurts? Are you crying because you caught feels?" And yeah. it's like, "Why can't it be both?" It can be both. <laughs> yeah, I contain multitudes. Yeah. Also, Michael Emerson, have you ever thought about doing uh, any work for Quinn? <laughs> Yeah, because um, I think that with that his off-screen voice, that that there's a market there. Sure, this is the embarrassing thing where I actually did get Clark Kented. Where I went, that's the doctor from Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wait, you're not wrong. He's wearing the glasses. Up until this point, Ben was a character who a wasn't wearing glasses mm-hmm. and had blood on him. Mm-hmm. So yeah. sure, sure. I did write down. I don't know who this is, and then I went on Lostopedia, and I was like, I'm stupid. Uh, <laughs> Kluge, I have seen Charlotte now probably five times, and I forget who she is every single time. Every and single. It, what's the other lady whose name who I can't remember? Uh, the the one that was sent to protect the recruits. Uh, oh, um, uh, Alana. Alana, I'll yeah. never remember her name. It's fine. I've got face blindness. It, it, so, so you didn't catch on to like 
all bloodied up, Ben. That's not on you. That's mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. JP sees pe- people that look the same, and he can't realize. Like he doesn't realize. Like he sees Charlotte, and then he sees her in the same scene. And it's like, who is that again? Like th- <laughs> this version of Ben here in the flash forwards in the future. Yeah, like he's cleaned up. He's got the glasses. Like it, yeah, I mean, it might as well be two different people. Um, yeah. But this is the harkening back to the earlier line: the day I start trusting him is the day I sold my soul. Ah. Yeah. Saeed's working for Ben to protect the Oceanic Six. Working for the weekend baby that's right lost at this point do we know who is oceanic six yeah here on the podcast we do chronologically saeed is only revealed to have been the he's the third one that they they figure out okay yeah lost the economist did we like it was it good that's I think what we're here to answer. Yeah, one of the things, yeah. Matt, as someone who has never seen Lost, but has listened to a bunch of this podcast, how did you feel about this 47 minutes of television? I feel like it was exactly what I expected. Okay. Which I could enjoy bits and pieces of it. Mm -hmm. I'm easy to please, as I said before, with professional wrestling. (laughs) I'm used to a very simple storyline to follow. Sure. Sure. So, yeah, when I saw Ben at the end and I said I didn't know who that was, and then I saw that it was Ben, I was like, whoa! (laughs) <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> so, I mean, it did what it wanted me to do, which is here, we have a mystery that's going to be solved, but here's a mystery at the end. And that's sure. all I want from Lost. So, yeah, I actually did like it. Sure. Yeah. Not enough to watch the show, but I liked it. Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that totally. works. Cool. Uh, JP, what about you? I, I really liked it. I like Saeed's flash forward. I liked the stakes. I liked it. the whole thing. It was great. All right. Cool. Really enjoyed it. Adam. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I I think I got to give this one like I got to give it a meh. I got to give it a C for wow. me. Wow. Um like an just wow. an, just an average because okay. the thing is, I think I probably enjoyed this more the first time I saw it and this time while I'm watching it I just saw some missed potential. Okay. I feel like the flash forward could have been closer to a sexy erotic thriller Ooh. than it got. And maybe that's just a symptom of not having enough time. You know, they do have to te- cover the stuff that's happening on the island. Sure. So I'm watching the flash forward and as I was getting through it, I was just like, ah, I want this to be way more tense than what it is. Sure. Saeed's character, I, I feel like he got mischaracterized in the in the flash forwards. Like he made too many what I consider to be like sort of non saeed gaffes that it just it it threw me off i was like and you know maybe maybe it's because he's heartbroken and stuff like that like we don't know this at the time but his fucking wife is dead like so Mm. maybe there's just maybe maybe there's some context because he sold his soul Maybe it's because oh. he sold his soul. Yeah. Like, but so, yeah, like, I, I just thought Said's characterization was a little off in the flash forward. Um, but that said, I do love the reveal of it being Ben as his benefactor by the end of the episode. I think that's really cool. Yeah. I got fooled by the Uno reverse, though. I didn't see that coming. Sure. So, like, and that's I, a thing. I did enjoy that. Uh, and again, you having not seen it before, like, I, I knew that was coming. Like, I, I knew when we sure. sat down, I was like, I, The Economist is this, is part one of the story of Ben and Saeed working together. And we've already seen some of the payoff of that in some season five stuff where Saeed's no longer happy to see Ben because of some stuff that happens to them when we, we're going to watch The Shape of Things to Come eventually. And that that's like part two of this. So, yeah. So... There, again, there were there were parts of it that I thought was cool. There was some of it that just weighed it down. Um, I like the I like finally that people are starting to get off the island. Uh, Saeed and Desmond getting on the helicopter. That's a big marker toward pro, uh, progress toward actually being rescued. A little bit of trivia about that is that Des this is the last time Desmond's on the island until he returns in season six in the episode The Package. Oh, okay. There's a Desmond episode called The Package. Uh, it's a Sun and Jin episode, but he's in it, and, and that marks even his return. better. <laughs> it, that marks his return to the island. So yeah, so if Desmond gets off. He's, he's the one who's out of all these people been there the longest and he's gonna be off the island for a really long time which is great so yeah yeah i don't know like i again we i've seen way worse episodes fucking i don't like egg town better than this one this one's better than egg town like but yeah it just yeah, I, again ass. i just saw some i just saw some missed potential here so that's the only thing that really prevents me from pushing it to the top i think sure so there you go there's the answer uh, in general, pretty good. I think, again, like I said, I think back in the day I liked it more than I did this time around. So I think that okay. does speak to the quality of the episode. Sure. Then let's uh, let's hand out some MVPs, shall we? Let's do it. Lost MVP, who is your favorite, who gets gold star, who was pulling their weight. Kluge, uh, you get to give out one gold star for the day here. Who was your lost MVP for The Economist? 
Well, this is controversial because oh. I just found out that I only have the one gold star. So, well, I mean, you can do an honorable mention if you need to. Okay, because I was going to say I have two, but I can also, like I said, it's controversial and I can get rid of it. We love controversy here. Bring it. All right. All right. Well, we'll see because I just had to, after watching this episode, my first episode of Lost Ever, Uh huh. not counting the plane crash, which I saw in a film class at <laughs> UW Oshkosh. <laughs> right, right, right. It definitely has to be these two guys. They're survivors. They've been putting a lot of work into it. My Lost MVP is JP and Adam. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a people pleaser. But if you had to pick just one. <laughs> I mean, I did doom Adam to this, so there is kind of like a bias there. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Clearly. Oh, yeah. that's just, you're, you're a sweetheart. Oh, my. Thanks. We're in the metrics. Otherwise, my backup was Kevin Euculus because he's my favorite Boston Red Sox player. Hell yeah. And I love, I love that exchange of just like, did the Red Sox win the World Series? Is it true? And Frank's just like, I don't want to talk about I'm it. from the Bronx. <laughs> I bleed you. Don't blue. ever ask me. <laughs> don't ever ask me that. <laughs> you're, you're, you're slipping into Alex Jones and Ken Clark. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. It's a force of habit. Oh, man. I love it. Kevin Euclid, the Greek god of walks. <laughs> uh, JP, what about you? Lost MVP. <sighs> Oh man, I honestly I didn't even really think about it. Um, uh, I'm just gonna shoot from the hip. I'll I'll just say Saeed. Like, sure. I I feel like I didn't say anything terribly funny in this episode because like I I really did enjoy this one. Like there wasn't a lot to dunk on. Sure. The MVP could have gone to just about anybody. The loss forever is gonna be a tough one because like I don't know. I just I was really just enjoying this one. Um, sure. I like Saeed a lot as a character and giving him just anything to do i'm all about it so mm -hmm. i just love watching side do his thing sure nice adam uh, I am going to give my loss MVP to Island Saeed specifically um, because okay. I, I think the stuff that he's doing in the present timeline is yeah he doesn't trust the freighter people but he's not gonna just curl up into a hole like Locke like he's like yeah. just because I'm afraid doesn't mean I can't make moves right we still gotta make some forward progress here this despite the fact that they may not be here to rescue us might still be a way off the island so let's play this thread out so uh, I they, would say they might know like who we are on paper but they don't know what we've been up to on the island and who we've become so yeah they know the old us right this is the new us exactly we've got the upper hand yep so there you go island Said. fuck yeah all right cool well flip side of the coin uh who is king suck of shit mountain who is the worst uh who did we not enjoy i want to put money on this one but uh <laughs> Kluge, why don't you start us off with who was your lost forever it pains me to say this but i have to go with hurley just oh. because <gasps> sure oh yeah Oh man, I, mean, I didn't even think about that. He was I mean, in, he the, was in the running for me, for sure. Yeah. It's one of those things where Hurley is like a character that I know because like he is like a character that's been embraced by like Lost and just in general yeah. culture. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh man, Hurley kind of sucks in this. Like yeah. he just he complains to John Locke. He's just a plan fodder and I don't know, I just didn't like him in this episode. Yeah. No, I yeah, I agree fully. Very fair. Yeah. Uh, JP, what about you? Fucking Meg. Meg. Uh, Kate. <laughs> it's just Kate, man. She's just... Sawyer's trying to pour his fucking heart out here, and you're just not... Ugh, I don't know. We don't know if she stayed or if she was traded, and it doesn't really fucking matter. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> uh, Adam? <laughs> Flash forward, Saeed. Really? Oh. Dude, that, it, it's such an obvious answer. Why are you still in Berlin? Because you're oh, dummy okay. high. Like, it's the easiest fucking thing to say. <laughs> I'm sure. here to work. Uh, moron. Come on. Okay, all right. <laughs> it doesn't, like, sometimes it's just one mistake. Sometimes you just got to make one. And if it's a big enough mistake, you fucking, you get rung up. Flash forward, Saeed. She's cute as hell, you moron. Yeah. All right, that's, that's a fair assessment. That's okay. A little bit of a rainbow. Hurley, Meg, yeah. Saeed, 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 and then you and me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love the discourse. 
I love this show. Ugh. And, you know, Kluge, you've said uh, a couple of times that you've saddled me with this ridiculous, like, burden or whatever. But honestly, man, the, if if this podcast was born out of that conversation that the two of you had so many years ago, man, I couldn't I couldn't be more thankful. Oh, this, I'm, I'm miserable. <laughs> <laughs> I've had such a good time doing this show. like, And I'm so happy that you were uh, able to get onto the show with us. Um, this has been an absolute blast. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I could be here. Absolutely. Yeah. We're glad to have you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Kluge, is there anything you want to plug? Uh, I do stand up, like I said. It's kind of nebulous. I, much like Saeed, am mysterious, and I <laughs> love to quit at any time. So my big thing that I would actually like to plug is my friend John Pata has a movie on Tubi called Black Mold. Oh, you guys should yeah. watch it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I mean, I know I just said that he's my friend, but I should let John actually speak for himself on that one. <laughs> just... <laughs> like how his movie speaks for itself. Hell yeah! It's a great movie. Yeah, it's Watch a it. it's a it's a horror film, right? He Pot is a horror guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's another uh, Wisconsin uh, Wisconsin bred boy out there uh, trying to make it out there in Hollywood. The person who convinced me to stay with Backlot. Nice. Love oh, yeah. me some John Pata. Nice. So very all right. Very cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Black Mold. John Pata. Yeah. Good stuff. Um. Yeah. Fuck if you're, yeah. um. If you're in the area and you see a clue's name come up on a poster at a comedy show, check it out, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Take take the opportunity when you can because apparently he might quit at any given time. <laughs> I love doing that. <laughs> and if you see him on Crime Watch, those financial <laughs> crimes are unrelated. <laughs> yeah. It was a blast doing this. Yeah. It was a blast having you, man. Fuck yeah, man. Thank you for spending a Thursday night with us. Uh, JP, what are we uh, what are we watching next time? Oh, man. <laughs> if you're looking to be lost with us, oh, especially after our conversation we just had, uh, next time we're going to be watching season six. Oh, right back yeah. to season six, baby. Episode three, <laughs> What Kate Does. <laughs> starring Kate. Hey, Kate. What that Kate do? <laughs> what that Kate do? <laughs> uh, I hope that there is another appliance-based murder in <laughs> this episode. Another comedy host alum is going to be our guest yeah. for that one. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. yeah. So love me some Egan. Looking forward yeah. to that. Looking forward to that. Not looking forward to what Kate does. Looking forward to Egan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, well, hey, thanks. Kluge, thanks, Adam, and thank you, everyone out there, for tuning in to another episode of Lost on Lost. Uh, That's right. I'm Adam. I'm JP. Do you have any idea what's going on on this show? No. (laughs) Me neither. Lost on Lost is produced and edited by me and JP. We wish to acknowledge that we live, work, and produce our show on occupied land. Burbank, California is located on the traditional tribal lands of the Tongva, Chumash, Keech, and Fernandeño Tataviam peoples. Milwaukee, Wisconsin is located on the traditional tribal lands of the Peoria, Potawatomi, Miyama, and Ho-Chunk peoples. And Lost was produced in Hawaii on the lands of the Kanaka Maoli. Visit native-land.ca to learn more about the land you live and work on. You can engage with us on IG, Facebook, and Twitter at Lost on Lost One. You can also email us at wearelostonlost at gmail.com or support us with dollar monies at coffee.com slash wearelostonlost. Thanks to Lostpedia and its community of contributors, Danny Schmitz, Random.org, and as always, you the listeners for tuning in. We're hosted at Podbean. You can hear us there or wherever you get your podcasts, except MySpace. We're, we're not on MySpace. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.